All right, so welcome everyone to lecture four of the IE Organic series, um, hosted by yours truly, Mike Evans. Today we are going to be discussing hybridization and resonance. But before we get to that, I just want to review what we talked about last time, which was an example of diatomic molecular orbital theory using the diatomic molecule, <clears throat> excuse me, the diatomic molecule fluorine. So fluorine is uh, has a Lewis structure that looks quite simple at first glance, just a single bond between two fluorine atoms and three lone pairs on each of the atoms, like so. And for the, molec for the molecular orbital diagram of fluorine, we drew four atomic orbitals on each side, the two P's and the two S's, and we ended up with molecular orbitals that looked something like this. We had two sigma bonds, and those are represented by these four orbitals here, the bonding and the antibonding, the sigma s and the sigma p. And then we had two pi bonds as well, here and here. And here are the pi antibonding orbitals, here and here. And actually, it's a little bit off scale. These three p orbitals would, in fact, be up in the middle of those orbitals there. And then filling in electrons, we found that we had electrons all the way up here, 14 electrons in all, in fluorine. And so as it, as it ended up, really it's sort of the key bonding orbital is this one here, as the other bonding orbital is canceled out by this antibonding orbital here. So we'll come back to this point later when we look in more detail at the shapes of the fluorine um, lowest, what's called the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, which is this guy here and the highest occupied molecular orbital, which are the pi orbitals here. So we'll look at those in more detail later. So I promise you that molecular orbital theory will come back again uh, in the course. All right. But I left uh, and ended things last time with this question of how do we take four orbitals, one of which whoop, is spherical, and, one of, and the other three of which are right angles to one another. Remember, we defined the bonding axis as the x-axis and each of the p orbitals points along one of the three cardinal directions. So how do we go from those orbitals to the weird bond angles we see, for instance, here, 120 degrees for this carbon, 109.5 for this carbon, and 180 here for the, uh, for the alkyne. How do we go from these perpendicular orbitals to these weird bond angles. And of course, these are the bond angles predicted by Vesper theory, which we talked about, and are, have been confirmed experimentally. So we need to explain how to take the simple atomic orbitals, which are the 2s and the 2ps, and combine them to make orbitals that fit this bonding description. So to start things off, I wanted to propose a question to you about the number of electron pair domains in each of these structures. So I'll give you a second to think about it. <clears throat> For those of us uh, hanging around, if you want to throw an answer in the chat box, that's fine. For each one. So let's call, let's call them A, B, and C from right to left. And we're looking at the number of electron pair domains about the carbon atom. All right, so hopefully after looking at this, you can see that here we have two electron pair domains, two sigma bonds coming off of that carbon, so we've got two. Here we have three, one for each of the sigma bonds again. And in the tetrahedral carbon, we have four EPDs. This is going to become important in a second because the number of electron pair domains is related to the number of sigma bonds, as you heard me sort of allude to. And so we can use this number of EPDs to guide our, our thinking about hybridization and how we take the simple atomic orbitals and build these complex geometries out of those. So the deep math of hybridization really you don't need to worry too much about, but what you should keep in mind is that for organic compounds, sigma bonds are built out of hybrid atomic orbitals typically. Not always, but probably 95% of the time for large organic molecules, hybrid orbitals are sort of the building block atomic orbitals. They're combinations of the simple 
atomic orbitals. And whatever simple atomic orbitals we leave behind, typically you'll see we leave behind either one or two 2p two orbitals, we can use those in pi bonding. So we've seen pi bonding before as the side-on overlap of two orbitals. In the context of organic chemistry, those two orbitals will most often be p orbitals on hybridized carbons that aren't that don't need to use all of the simple atomic orbitals. So they sort of leave a p orbital behind, and if that p orbital has an electron in it, then it can participate in pi bonding with an adjacent p orbital that's also half filled with an electron. So the Lewis structure representation of that pi bond would just be a simple second line above the, the sigma bond connecting the two atoms, as I've drawn there. So just to hit this slide one more time, pi bonds come from side-by-side -side overlap of the simple atomic 2p orbitals, but the orbitals that overlap to form sigma bonds in organic molecules are the hybrids. And we'll see the importance of the hybrids at the end of this discussion, really, and how we can use them to think about reactivity and, and talk about the reactivity of organic molecules.